Um, thank you very much, Brian, for the introduction. Um, he didn't use any negative words, which I'm very happy with. Um, um, I'm an artist, as Brian was saying, and I'm also a lecturer as well in art education in Mary Immaculate College in Limerick. Um, and um, I want to tell you a little bit about myself, um, and I have a few slides here to help us with that process. And then I want us to work as a group um, and do a little bit of art. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about that, and it'll come together because you'll be actually almost replicating the type of art that I do and the process that is involved as well. So um, I'm an artist and a patient, as you see. Um, just to give you a little bit of context as to who I am and where I come within the um, ovarian spectrum, um, I, I had um, a routine minor operation in 2013 for gallbladder and then at that stage they found secondary cancers and I got uh, labelled at stage 4 ovarian cancer. Um, I had a full hysterectomy and because I'm an artist I had the need of recording physically my uh, physically and via sketches and audio I wanted to record my process so the moment I was ready to take my sketchbook in in my bed after the hysterectomy I started drawing the dreams I was having the feelings the language that the medics were using everything associated with the journey that I was going through um, on that as well, a few days after my hysterectomy, I wanted my friend to record my body, my wound, um, and me a few days after my hysterectomy. Um, so I asked her to come to my house and photograph me in my sitting room uh, with my, my things around. But you know the paintings from the traditional paintings of ladies on chaise longs or on couches or beds? I kind of wanted to mimic that a little bit. So I asked her, I had all the, the scenes set up, and I wanted to, um, an image of me at the door, and I was uh, fully nude, which isn't actually um, something I've done before. But I felt, I promise, <laughs> but I just felt I really needed to record this moment because this is actually a moment in time which hopefully, which cannot actually repeat itself as it was. I was terrified. Um, I had my sister who was an oncology nurse with me and she's an artist as well and I had a very good friend and my, my friend and my, my partner as well and he had decided that he had his rucksack on his back because he was terrified and um, so he was about to go but actually stayed for the whole thing which was very which was great but uh, we, photo we photographed Pauline photographed me and um, she did audio and video so I have those as a bank of resources as an artist to use and I'm using them actually and I'll be having uh, I have an exhibition actually in Mary Eye at the moment, if anyone is in Limerick, it's on for the next week. But I want to do a very big um, exhibition based on those photographs. Anyway, um, I have chemotherapy actually until I, that lies, that slide. It was supposed to be 2016, but I'm off it th since three months. Um, and I'm on a break and um, my oncologist says that I'll have to go back again on it. But you know, I'm on a break at the moment and it's a very nice place to be. Anyone who's been on a break, it's a, it's a lovely space. Um, I did art therapy in Milford, it's in Limerick, um, uh, alongside other alternative therapies. And then I was using, really what I am doing is I'm using art to document my various stages of emotions, incidents, discourse and research. Oops. So from an art point of view, my, some of my heroes are a lady in Mexico, um, she has passed since, but her name is Frida Kahlo, and you might, be, um, you might know her, she had the monobrow, and she does a lot of her own painting. She's been in and out of hospital since she was 14, she had a tram accident, and it really uh, messed up her, her spinal cord. So she was actually in bed and recovering from numerous operations all of her life. This impacted on her fertility as well. And all her paintings are about her as a woman who cannot have a baby um, and who is very, um, very, um, she, she, she t talks in her artwork about being female and, be and having illness. So she would be kind of my icon, really, um, from a visual art point of view. And you can see her here, she's restricted, and she's still working as an artist. So for me, even this is a very empowering image. Um, the next one is an, a, a UK artist called Jo Spence, 
Um, and I saw her in Cork in the Glucksman, as in her images. She's now passed as well. Um, she, she actually, she's a photographer and a political photographer, and she's also, um, she's also a, a feminist as well. And she got leukemia first, and then she got breast cancer. And you can see on her left breast, I don't know if you can see it from here, but it says, property of Joe Spence. So she's really questioning, well, actually, who has the right to take this part of my body away? And I thought that resonated with me an awful lot because, you know, you've got the medical world and we've, we're, we know the medical world because we're in it, whether we want to be in it or not. And it can be a harsh word, harsh language, hard to hear what the oncologists and other people are saying. It, it's, it, it's a tough one. Unless you're in the medical zone, it can be a tough one to um, break down and, and actually kind of hmm, uh, get along with in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a professional sense and as a patient as well. It can be a tough environment to be in. So these are some of my visual influences. Then to my own artwork, while um, as, as soon as I could, I started making. So after my hysterectomy and I got into chemo very soon after that, I started you know, really trying to make as much artwork while I could. And anyone who's been through chemo, and it's a lot of, of people, I'm, I'm, I'm sure, um, there, you have your good days and bad days. So I would be rejecting even making anything for two or three days or weeks or even months. And then there'd be a spurt of making loads of stuff. So it was on off for, for all of the two years. The whole title of my show is called Whisper. And I don't know if you know, but uh, you might even have done it yourselves, and I have in the past. But when people say the word cancer, they actually say the word cancer. Do you, do you notice that they drop the tone? So it's almost like an, a, an area of maybe shame or embarrassment, um, or that it has to be kept a little bit quiet. It's like a little secret. And I thought that this was very interesting. And I started using my normal tone when I was using it, because it wasn't the, that it, the fact I was proud of it, but I wanted it to be, I wanted to be, uh, an, I wanted to own it because I have it. So I can't do anything about it. So I'm speaking about it. I don't want to shout about it, but I definitely want to, to whisper or talk about it. Um, the middle piece over here or over here is the piece that my friend took a photograph of. And you'll see me, it's very far off, but you'll see me totally naked on my couch at home. And there were various positions that um, I, my, my body went to. To um, some was accentuating the wound, and the other was just accentuating a normal 40-year-old body um, that has gone through trauma. And um, the the one of on, on the other side, the right-hand side, the left-hand side rather, is vitiate. And one of the meanings for vitiate is taint or to be tainted. So I felt at certain parts of my journey that I felt tainted. I felt that there was something wrong with me or that I was a little bit, you know, um, isolated um, in certain uh, societies. Like going back to work, I felt people were a little bit afraid to go near me. And there was one incident when I was walking down the corridor and somebody was coming towards me and she walked on her heels and walked the other way. She couldn't cope with me. And I found that very disturbing, but I actually found it, you know, that was her reaction and she couldn't deal with that at that particular time. And it is a difficult thing to, to deal with. Somebody here actually said, I don't know who it was who said the burden of positivity is the person. Um, so somebody used that quote in Overcare in Galway two years ago. And I came away with that quote thinking, oh my god, this is so strong. Because lots of people tell you, be positive, be positive. Yes, you're very positive. And you kind of go, when can I, when can, how can I, more positive can I get? So it, sometimes it can be a burden. And I just wanted to put it out there that it can be a burden. But you know, I, I like people saying, be positive to me. So it, it depends. You know, you can look at it different ways. Um, the next one is an image of me. These are on small little kind of like seven by um, five centimeter pieces of polymer clay, and they're printed. And you'll see the stitching. And we'll all be stitching in a little while. And this is the reason I've given you the packs at your table, is because I've been doing a lot of stitching for lots of different reasons. One of the stitching is to stitch the wound back together again. 
The also reason is, you know, it, it's, it's a, a, a skill that sometimes we don't use these days. And it is um, a skill that a lot of people, I think, in this room might have from previous experiences like school. And we're all actually quite, I think we're all quite competent. Don't worry if you're not. And if you don't feel like doing it, don't worry about it. Um, and myself, and I have a lovely helper called Dan at the front table here, and he's my new helper, so ask myself and Dan anything, right? <laughs> Dan's great. <laughs> um, this is another one. Um, I was very much into the different types of ritual, morning rituals, and I did this piece, and it's called I'd Rather Not Host You. And a host being the host of cancer being within me, and also host being, it seemed to be, I was, um, it's kind of a religious term as well, the word host, it has its own significance. And the veil seemed to be very significant for me because, um, I don't know, do you, some of you remember wearing mantillas um, back in the day in, in the churches and we had to oh, cover the heads. And also maybe the ritual of covering your head when you're in mourning, and it's a shield. It's to shield you and protect you from society for a period of time. And this resonated an awful lot with me. Um, I did these works very quickly. I was lecturing at the time, and I just had to get these work. I, I did these works in a day, and they're small little pieces. And I was very angry with, my, um, with the, the um, impact my first six chemos had on me. It changed my physique. It changed my mental attitude. and and. I changed, it, I lost my hair, and I felt the hair in particular actually as a source of identity was devastating for me. Even though actually I embraced the baldness and didn't wear a wig, I loved it, but I felt very aggrieved losing the hair. The moment I lost my hair, um, I felt ex extremely upset. So I have a lot of hair in, in this work and a lot of medical tubes. You'll see a few tubes in there as well. And also birds, again, back to the kind of Victorian and Gothic ritual for, um, for death and grieving. I seem to be reading a lot around that area. Um, so it's on to our workshop. Um, so what we're going to be doing is you are going to be sewing significant words, phrases, quotes, symbols of memories or um, onto the material that you find in your envelopes. And I've already threaded um, your needles with different thread. So, uh, so what I want you to do is have a think first about what kind of words or symbols resonate with you and your journey so far. And also, <laughs> okay, hang, hang, on a mo hang on a moment. Put your packs down. <laughs> Push your packs away from you. <laughs> just, we, I'll tell you what, we, we'll get cracking at this in two minutes. It's just, it, it would be nice just to, so everyone's on the same page. So have a think about that fro phrase, rather, or quote. It could be something that I have said this morning. It could be something from my artwork. It could be something that somebody told you two months ago or eight months ago. It could be an oncologist. It could be your mum. It could be memories of somebody that you know who has died from cancer and what their words were or what you remember most from them. Something significant to you. There's a little piece of chalk in your packs as well. So if you want to draw out the word or the symbol first before you go sewing, um, you can do that. And the discourse, I'd love you to chat because sewing I'd like us to be like in sewing circles if you like and have chats to people, maybe you don't know people to the left and right of you or opposite you. So it would be lovely to have an engaged um, time. And the last thing I'd like you to do is, um, with your permission, and if you don't want to do this, that's no problem, myself and my trusty assistant, Dan, will collect your artwork and put it on the two columns here and here with blue tack and we'll have it and display it for the day so everyone can look at everybody else's work, okay? Um, myself and Dan are going to be going around the tables and asking, does anyone need help? There's two, two other things. We have to settle down now, guys. <laughs> two, two other things. One, I have lovely old-fashioned thimbles and they're from the teacher training college and the, I think they're back in the day and there's a, a box of them up there 
and Dan has left little thimbles on each of your um, table. They're precious it items from our history of sewing, so I'd love them back, okay? <laughs> if that's okay with you. And um, I think that's it. Are there any questions that anyone wants to ask? No? Do you want to get cracking on the workshop and we'll be around to talk to you? Okay, good luck. You too. Oh, sorry, one more thing. If anyone wanted to check out my artwork, I've got a website here, so take it down and uh, feel free to take a look. Thank you.